Interior, Edgar Bones' house, night. The order preps for the gala. The Pruitt brothers joke around with Gwen. Moody strategizes with the older order members as the Longbottoms listen. Emmeline watches Anna. Interior, Molesworth Manor, night. A mirror image as the Death Eaters get ready as well. Abraxas straightens his fustiest, most old-fashioned robes. Selwyn does the same on his other side. Lucius, looking especially expensive, murmurs something into Narcissa's ear. Rabastin and Rodolphus head up the back of the pack. Interior, Edgar Bones' house, night. The Order, still waiting. Some in their gala wear, including Moody, who's in an ill-fitting tux and looks very unhappy about it. The others dress for battle. Sirius stares at the Ministry Gala invitation in his hand, fuming. James is wearing normal clothes, as is most of the Order. Lily comes up behind him and wraps an arm around his shoulders. It's have all the fun. So unfair. I look great in dress robes. Sirius barges in. I'm not going. Like hell you're not. They only invited me because Orion's dead. And we're lucky they did. We need everyone we can get on the inside. You can bet the Death Eaters will be there. You think I want to be wearing this, dancing the night away on the off chance the Heptagon is there? You can't make me. No. I'll go with you. He can bring a plus one, so bring me. The more the merrier, right? Keep him out of trouble. Fine. But I'm doing this my way. Interior, gala lobby, night. The gala's lobby is packed full of wizards in dress robes, buffet tables full of magically refilling food, people stepping through a wall by way of entering. Gwen enters the room flanked by the Pruitts. They walk into the crowd, passing Moody, who's standing with Frank and Alice. They give each other the slightest nod. Look. He nudges Gwen towards the direction of Rabastin and Rodolphus. Gwen keeps her eyes on them as they pass. We wheel around to see Emmeline and Anna walking through the crowd. They pass by Lucius and Narcissa, who are schmoozing some ministry officials and pretend not to notice them. Remus and Sirius finally enter. You ready? I don't want to be back here. When I ran away, I thought that was it. I'd tarnished the Black family name so much of no one would see me as one of them ever again. But now I'm here doing exactly what Orion would be doing if... Let's just get this over with. Kiss for good luck. We definitely need it. <laughs> as they enter the crowd, we must take Sirius's hand and gives it a squeeze. But right as they do, Sirius catches Lucius's eye. Lucius smiles and begins to walk over. No, no, no. What are you... They flee into the ballroom. Sirius spots the dance floor. He wraps an arm around Remus's waist and pulls him into a waltz. Oh. 
It's ninth bad enough without having to speak to any of my cousins. They struggle to find the rhythm for a moment. Remus steps on one of Sirius' feet. Sorry. It isn't so bad. <laughs> Not bad at all. Interior, gala ballroom lobby, night. Gwen and the Pruitt stand in line for food, picking out bits and pieces and putting them on their plates. When they get to the end, they look up and Rabastin and Rodolphus do the exact same from the other side of the table. Fabian reaches for a pastry, puts it on his plate. Rodolphus does the same. No one's eyes leave each other. In the crowd, Emmeline and Anna are caught in conversation with Minister Mincham and Crouch. Perhaps we could try a different tactic or a more uh, <clears throat> reasonable. Uh, approach. Something that our more prominent families will feel more comfortable voting yes, for. Yes, Minister, but if these families are associated with the dark arts... But minister, I must say, you do know how to throw a party. Before we hear another vapid word, Anna steps out of the crowd and heads for the edge of the room. She digs around in her clutch. What are you up to? Don't worry, I I've got it. Whatever you're planning, I can help you. I don't want to do this on my own. But if you don't need to. But I want to. I've got this handled, all right? Anna turns her back on Emily. All right, Pop. I understand. I just don't need to be protected right now, okay? But when she glances back, Emmeline is already gone. Anna turns back to the wall and reaches back into her clutch. Across the room, Fabian pauses mid-bite. What the? All the heads in the crowd turn. A bright red envelope floats down in the middle of the room. It comes to a gentle halt in front of Selwyn, Mincham, and Crouch. The red envelope starts to smoke. Suddenly, everyone realizes exactly what it is. The crowd starts backing up. Plug your ears! The envelope bursts into flame, and as it does... Congratulations, Abraxas. Everything is proceeding as the Dark Lord planned. Thanks to us, the Hepticon is within our grasp. You played your part well. What about this curse to kill authorization? Shall I take care of it? No need. After Rosia's death, the Ministry will never get it passed. They still have no idea it was Mulciver who imperious that aura, and they never will. And Lucius? Leave my son out of this. I am Mulciver's right hand. I was the one who suggested the Heptagon in the first place. I planned its convenient disappearance. Lucius had nothing to do with it. Very well. Within days the Heptagon will be ours to do with as we wish. And how glorious that will be. As the howler disintegrates, the crowd is deathly quiet. Everyone turns to stare at Selwyn, standing next to the minister. Close by, Abraxas attempts to melt into the crowd. Across the room, Gwen, the Pruitt, and the Stranges dumbfoundedly watch the drama unfold when the bee charm starts vibrating against Gwen's chest, glowing white hot. Gwen whirls away just as Gideon draws his wand. The tray of cupcakes flies up at the Lestranges. Rodolphus rolls under the table. The cupcakes bombard Rabastin, smearing frosting all over his throat. Gwen forges through the chaotic, angry crowd alone, all pressing towards Selwyn and Abraxas, eyes scanning the room, shoving people out of the way. Her eyes land on Antonin Dolohov, in all black, out of place. He places something against the pillar and starts to back up disappearing into the shadows. Gwen resumes her frantic efforts to get through the crowd. Interior, Molesper Manor, night. Molesper Senior stands facing a wall that has a glowing rune etched into its surface, his wand raised. Molesper Junior is behind him. Why not use the killing curse? Wouldn't that be easier? Easier, yes, but it's not enough. You have to make them afraid. Imperio. Interior, Gala Lobby, night. Gwen gets her eyes on the heptagon just as it begins to glow. The device begins to shift. She'll never get there in time. Back now! But the crowd isn't listening. She digs a small ball from her pocket, throws it at the ballroom doors. A giant golden net appears, shoving everyone on the threshold back into the ballroom. 
Close the doors now! Sirius and Remus listen, shoving the ballroom door shut. The heptagon stops moving. A beat of nothing. Then, a visible ripple emanates from the heptagon. It hits Moody, who's trying to get to Selwyn. It passes over Frank. Alice, a foot away, is spare. Sirius yanks Remus out of the spell's radius just in time. It stops a few inches short of their feet. Gwen looks around. For a moment, nothing happens. Then, everyone in the spell's radius draws their wand and starts shooting spells at anyone within range. At the exact same moment, we see Death Eaters in masks pour in from a back entrance. Rodolphus and Rabastin pull on masks when nobody is watching. It's pure chaos, impossible to track. Spells fly in every direction, some resorting to hand-to-hand -hand combat. Alice is thrown to the floor by Frank, clearly under the Imperious Curse. She raises up a shield charm just as he fires a spell at her. Moody, caught in the Imperious Curse, raises his wand to fire at passerby. He looks like he's moving through honey, agonizingly slowly. The familiar snarl on his face, his hand falters, and Moody shakes off the curse. <sighs> Crouch runs up, not under the influence. Aurors, to me! A group of Aurors led by Kingsley needed terrified Minchum to a corner of the room. Otago! Shield charms form a bubble around the group, protecting the minister from harm. Moody and Crouch move back to back, firing at Death Eaters, but avoiding everyone caught by the Imperious Curse. It's difficult to tell friends as well. Please, my bloody backup! But almost before he finishes speaking, the Order rushes in through the magic main entrance. They leap into the fray, led by Edgar. Gwen stuns a rampaging Imperious Ministry member and ducks a curse as he leaves to the chaos towards the Heptagon. Just then, Dolokhov reappears in the crowd. They lock eyes and both rush for the Heptagon. Gwen's closer and faster. She hears a familiar yell and turns. The Pruitts are dueling each other, both clearly imperious, causing a lot of damage. Gwen glances at the Heptagon, then at the Pruitt. Dolohov snatches the Heptagon from the ground. Gwen races to the Pruitt. Oi! Over here! They both turn and race towards her. A golden net encompasses them, trapping the Pruitts where they can't do any more damage. Before they can react, Gwen stuns them both. Sirius and Remus emerge from the crowd, joining James and Peter's side. Don't hurt anyone who might be in Peary. Marlene blocks a spell from hitting Dorcas. The blade's there trying to hurt us. Darling. Kidding. The order is divided in half by the crowd. Marlene and Dorcas try to stun the Imperious and not get trampled. Just then, a group of Death Eaters crosses their path. Them you can hurt. Marlene and Dorcas only to tie the wave of fury on the Death Eaters, who are pinned down between them and the Aurora. Emmeline forges through the crowd. Anna! Emmeline takes out a Death Eater with a curse to the face. Emmeline grabs her, pulling her close. Selwyn! What? I can't find Selwyn! Just then, she looks across the ballroom and sees Selwyn slipping out in the chaos. I need to get you away. She tugs out of Emmeline's grasp and goes after Selwyn at full tilt. Anna, wait! But then a Death Eater engages her and she has no choice but to let Anna go. Alice and Frank still duel. They are evenly matched, but Frank has the advantage of actually wanting to hurt Alice. Frank, don't do this! She blocks a curse the force knocks her onto her back. Fight it all! Frank snarls and goes to fire another curse, but his wand stops short. Alice doesn't take the chance. Expelliarmus! Frank's wand flies into her hand. She stares him down as his face crumples and he falls to his knees. It's me. I'm here, it's me. Exterior, gala ballroom, night. James is the first one outside. All around him, Death Eaters disappear. Within seconds, they're all gone. Exterior, back door, night. Anna bursts out a back door, spotting Selwyn preparing to separate. You. I must admit, I didn't think you could do it. You're very clever. You underestimated me. Won't make that mistake again. You won't get the chance. You don't have what it takes. She peels over a thousand ropes from head to toe. You can't do this! Anna conjures a gag, muffling her words. Inside, things have settled, but the damage is even more apparent. Bodies, either dead or unconscious, are everywhere. Edgar releases Gwen's net, blocking the ballroom doors. The protected inhabitants flood out. 
Moody helps the Longbottoms up, both worse for wear. Gwen releases her golden net around the Pruitts. Her eyes land on Dollhoff's discarded cloak. She picks it up and a piece of paper flutters out. She catches it before it hits the floor. It's blank and pristine. She pockets it. The Death Eaters are all gone. That's good, right? So why doesn't it feel like we won? Because they did exactly what they came here to do. Anna re-enters, pushing Selwyn. She catches Emmeline's eye as she passes Selwyn off to the oars. Crouch acknowledges her. Midas and Mincham approaches, still guarded by two oars. He looks more than a little manic. Crouch, the authorization for curse to kill, it's approved. But, but sir, the wizard come on. Do you think I want to debate procedure at a time like this? You've been campaigning for months. Uh, congratulations, you've got it. These uh, these Death Eaters, I want them hunted down and sent to Azkaban to rot, whatever means necessary. Unease and muttering ripples through the room. What about Lawrence? Hmm? He was imperious. The Howl approved it. Uh, oh, oh, yes, 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 yes. Um, uh, well, he'll be released from Azkaban immediately. And uh, as for Abraxas, we'll hunt him down immediately. No need. Lucius parts the crowd, guiding Abraxas at wand tip to the minister's feet. I caught my father trying to escape. Minister, I assure you, I had no idea of his treachery. If I had, I would have brought him to you myself. My father suffers from madness brought on by old age. That is a lie. His delusions have allowed nefarious followers of he who must not be named to corrupt his mind. That cannot excuse his actions, but it will not happen again. Minister, if you'd allow me, I would have my father committed. I understand if you want him in Azkaban, but please consider his fragile mental state. I can make sure that he never does anything like this again. Uh, very well, Lucius. Uh, we all know you have been nothing but an upstanding member of our society. Um, your father will remain in custody until you make arrangements for his care. Thank you, Minister. He nods to the Minister, Crouch, even Anna. They exit to the sympathetic murmurs of the crowd. Selwyn is escorted out by oars behind Abraxas. Anna gives Emmeline a triumphant smile as she approaches, but it quickly fades at the look on Emmeline's face. Don't look at me like that. Selwyn was going to get away. He could have been killed. We won. I don't understand why you're, you're upset with me. I wasn't upset. I, w I was terrified. It's not that I think you can't take care of yourself. It's that I don't want you to get killed on this crusade. All I want is for you to trust me. I do trust you. And I'm proud of you. But there's a difference between a hero and a martyr, Puff. Martyrs don't get to be happy. Please. Don't you want to be happy? I'll make it up to you. I promise. Anna, that was brilliant. <sighs> Rest of the order crowds around her, clapping her on the back and grinning. Even Moody gives her a nod of respect. The order gathers around a beat up Gideon, Fabian, and Gwen. Gwen stands protectively over them as if daring anyone to get too close. Frank, Edgar, and Lily start performing healing spells. Did everyone make it out? All of ours. They got the heptagon. I, I couldn't stop it. You'll get another chance. I'm giving you permission for a mission, a real mission. Since your talents seem best put to use creating chaos. Fantastic. What's the mission? We've known the Malfoys were with the Death Eaters for months. 
But we didn't know Abraxas planned for them to take the Heptagon. That, 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 that doesn't change now that Abraxas is gone. Lucius has already stepped up to take his place. We need to recover the Heptagon before something like this happens again. I think it's time we pay the Malfoys a proper visit. <laughs> <laughs>